We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight, we've got a question from Patreon patron and indie game designer, Roger Malosh, who writes, Hello, Mo and Sean. I'm enjoying your show, especially when I can catch it live. I have a question about engine building games. What exactly is an engine building game? I hear of games like Wingspan, Race for the Galaxy, and Steam Time being described as engine builders. This makes sense because you gradually build up your tableau or player board, and the results accelerate through the synergies developed between the components as the game progresses. But this could be said for most games. Monopoly behaves this way, as do most games classified as economic games, like Crude or Acquire. Rail builders like Chicago Express and Martian Rails can also build up an economic engine as the game progresses. How do you and Sean define an engine builder? What are some of your favorites? Oh, thank you very much for the uh, the comment or question, I guess, Roger. Uh, this, I think, this is a great question, actually, and it does not have an easy answer. Uh, and it's definitely up for debate. Not everyone agrees on exactly what an engine builder is. So what I want to start with is, I don't remember when we did this. It was our first year we were recording this podcast. One of our, our more popular episodes and one of my most popular blog posts is our giant list of tabletop game mechanics, which I don't know how many mechanics is on it now, but it's a lot. And on there, one of the ones I featured is engine building. So to quote that, players need to build some form of system to score points. The system starts small, but grows as the game goes on. Scoring usually escalates as the game goes on as well. Actual ways this is done is through a combination of the other mechanics. So, while I think that works, it's pretty broad. And as Roger noted, that could almost be applied to pretty much any game where you're scoring points, as long as you score more points later in the game than earlier. So I think we need to dive a bit deeper into this tonight to, to get into why we think certain games are engine builders and why we think others aren't, and what classifies an engine building game, at least to us. Right. So, I mean, simply the, the, the most straightforward thing is an engine is a system designed to do work on your behalf. Like that is what an engine is, if we're getting right down to those roots. So an engine builder is building a system designed to do work on your behalf. Right. Uh, and so it's got to do something without you being involved, essentially. You need to start things rolling, but then the rest of it, to me, really kind of progresses on its own. Right. Um, and a better machine, better results. So a better engine, yeah, more chance of winning. Yeah, and that's where we get to the term uh, running your engine. So in a engine building game, you usually have built something that you can run, that you can get going, that you can let happen. Instead of having to do everything yourself, you run your engine to get your thing out of the end. So, um, so the main thing I think you need is that system, right? Something, combination of parts you put together through the game, usually starting small, I think always starting small, and then getting more. Now, more of what depends on the game. Like I, in one game, it's going to be resources. In another game, it's going to be victory points. It's probably all going to be victory points in the end, but you might be getting more resources that you can turn into victory points and other things. Another big part of most engine building games, actually, I think probably all of them, is you're taking one thing and converting it to something else. And sometimes multiple times where you're going to take the thing and you convert it into another thing and then you convert that into another thing and then eventually that turns into points you're, you're starting some kind of chain reaction a chain of events through various game mechanics or through various gameplay that are going to turn one thing into something big and again it starts small so at the beginning of the game you're going to have one link in the chain and by the end of the game you hopefully have this big pile of chains all interacting together producing your points or your resources so what we're looking at is like, at, at you get A, right? So you start, you get this thing. And yeah, at, at, at turn one, you produce a, a basic resource. Well, then next turn, you can you build a new thing and you can turn your basic resources into something new. So your basic resource now becomes an advanced resource. And then once you have B, you can now get C, which is you could trade that resource in to turn it into a building because you have enough buildings now. And then you can trade in that building with other resources to build a bigger building or something like that, right? Like I, I, without mentioning specific games and game mechanics, you're slowly building on something small to something bigger and eventually getting it to give you whatever you need to win the game. Again, in most games, that's going to be points, but not necessarily. Some games, it could be the number of cards in your hand or it could be something else. And it's also possible, I mean, we talk about transforming, but it's also possible to transform from A to B and B to A again. So getting more A by passing yes. through B, essentially. Yep, um, yep. You don't necessarily have to have a C and a D 
uh, and, and and your final output is different than your initial input. It could all it could your your final input your final output and your initial input could be the same even if it passes through different steps along the way and different yep. different yeah. materials or whatever along the way. So I think the the, the most important part to the me for a, a, a real engine builder is having a little and getting using that little to build more. And then that little bit more lets you build even more, which gets you more. And it's that, that, that progression of taking a little bit, getting more. And then by having more, you can get more of that thing and you just keep progressing up. So it's a, it's the, I remember someone described all palladium role-playing games as big guys with guns, killing people to get bigger guns, to kill bigger guys with bigger guns, to get bigger guns, to get kill more. And then that was a description of riffs from back yeah, in the day. That's and for some reason that riffs. sticks in my head, right? Like I, as an example of this, without bringing in a specific board game. You, you, you do SDC so you can get damage that does MDC. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So another thing that's important for an engine builder for this to actually work is the game has to have some form of permanence. You have to put something into play that can be stay there and be built on. Now, the best example of this, every as far as I, I can think of, maybe I'm missing one, every tableau that I've ever seen is an engine builder. Because you are putting cards in front of you, building your collective resources, your stuff that you can use, and you are going to, it stays in play and you build on it every round. You're adding more cards to your tableau. So this is going to fit all those games like Valeria Card Kingdoms and Race for the Galaxy and Puerto Rico and any game where you're putting a tableau in front of you, building upon it. These are also going to be games where you build chains or routes on a central board. So instead of just having a playing board, you're connecting things. So here's where uh, Richard, Richard, is that the right name? Roger, Roger thank you. Roger. Wow, I'm just off on names, but like they're close, but they're yeah, not there. Yeah. Roger, I'm like, I know Roger personally. I shouldn't forget his name. Where Roger mentions the Empire Builder games. The Empire Builder games, if you make a chain of routes that work, then you are also doing that. So now here's an interesting uh, question that sort of breaks away from, from, your uh, some of your theories, but I think a lot of people would argue that it is an engine builder, and that's a deck builder where there isn't permanence necessarily. You're building there an engine some. that that it, it's permanent within your within your deck, yeah. but essentially you're rebuilding that engine, or you need to try and rebuild that engine every time you you're playing out of hand again. See, I think deck builders are engine builders. Some are going to have more engine building than others because your permanence is your deck. It's not a tableau in front of you, but it's your deck. It's the same thing if you're building up a game where you have a hand of cards and you keep the hands of your cards and you get new hands of cards and you eventually have more options. So example, like Gloomhaven is not an engine builder. Right. There, there is, there, the, your but, hand of cards is set at the start of the star, game. Star, um, um, your favorite one, uh, Star. Star, star Realms. Star Realms. Is an engine builder. Is an engine builder. <laughs> but the other thing, though, is some deck builders are more engine builders to others, which is going to get to my next point in a second, is I don't think Ascension is a good example of an engine builder. Because Ascension, in general, you just buy the most expensive card, and you just play the most expensive card, and you get some stuff, and you buy stuff. And yeah, eventually, you're going to get more cards that let you buy more stuff, so you can buy those more expensive cards. So there is an aspect of it. But when you compare that to, say, Star Realms, or a game where there's combos, where if you put in more yellow cards, yellow cards let you draw more cards. And for every yellow card you have, if you have another yellow card you've already played, they then go off of each other and let you get more stuff. So there's there's a reason to do it. Now, later games of Ascension that added in the events made it so there were reasons to collect similar colors. Yeah, I, the problem with Ascension, I think, because Ascension should be, even in the initial yeah. forms, it should be a deck builder. The problem is they they fell into that trap of expense equals yes. reward. So yes. if you play it and ignore the the fact that the most expensive card is the best, there are some really great engines you can build within the different suites. Yes. But then you'll lose because the other person is just buying the most expensive the card. The most every expensive, time. yeah. They, so the engines are there, but they don't benefit you as well as, as they much, should. Yes. See, so. So like deck builders, I would always just call deck builders, deck builders. And to me, that's a subset of engine building. But now to look at a different side of it, I don't think deck construction are engine builders. Magic the Gathering to me is not an engine builder. Now building your deck, you are building an engine into your deck, right? You are, you are putting your card combos, you're putting in your chains, you're putting in your mana burn, whatever, whatever system you're building into your deck. But to me, that's not an engine building game. That's something you have, you do you before have built you your play. engine. 
You have built, built your, your engine. engine. Yes. You're playing an engine, but you're not you, building. You are engine. running your engine. In Magic the Gathering, you're not building it. Right. So where that's where I think it's different, where deck building, you are building the engine as you play. So Although I, I, I would argue in newer Magic the Gathering uh, that I've had experience with playing online, there are some engine building things that are now possible. Um, and, 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 and you're setting up the table and you're building engines on the table. Uh, that have permanence. Yeah, but again, to me, that's you're running the engine. You built the engine ahead of time, and you got the right cards out at the time to get that engine to work. But yeah, to it's... me, that's the difference. Again, I said this. This one's a broad one. This is a good time. Yeah. That's why I wanted it to be a discussion and not just here's what an engine builder is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the, the, some of the newer. I agree 100% with you in Magic the way we used to play. Some right. of the newer versions and some of the newer um, ways the cards are interacting feel like you're moving more towards uh, the engine building concept, even though right. the actual building is in some ways happening right. before the game starts. But I also agree with you at the beginning point where I'm not sure if deck builders really qualify. I wouldn't call, I, again, deck builders to me is a separate thing. It right. has an engine building aspect to it, but it's the fact that every round your cards are wiped. Right. Now, the permanence is not there. The permanence isn't there, right? So, you're hoping, and the random element's really high, you're hoping to get the right cards to get the thing to work. Now, if you can color your decks, you get more of that engine building feel, right? Like Star Realms, if you can get your deck down to 10 cards or five cards that you can just keep cycling to do those ridiculous amounts of damage, then that you've got a great engine in that game. But again, I don't think it's enough to really call them engine builders. Because right. to me, for a game to be an engine builder, that has to be the main thing you're doing. The game is about building an engine. It's all about building component parts together to create a system to get you the most of the thing you need to win. And not all games are engine builders. Like despite the fact Roger say all games are engine builders, <laughs> that everyone has some aspect of engine building. I actually disagree. I don't think every game is an engine builder. We'll get into some specific examples in a bit, but a lot of games have engine building aspects because well, it's part of the game. Like you're building a thing. You're trying to score more points. You're trying to do something you want. So I think a lot of games have engine building aspects, but what I want, like when I say a game's an engine builder, that's the main mechanic. That's the main thing you're trying to do. That's right. the, the feeling you get of building something to get you something more and having that thing, uh, you've a sense of construction, a sense of I, I built something in the end of the game is very different from I drew a bunch of lines on a map or I played a bunch of cards. Yep. Now, I also think it's important to note uh, as I said, this is a pretty divisive topic, is this is not on Board Game Geek. You will not find Engine Builder. Their list of mechanisms, they don't call them mechanics, their list of mechanisms does not include engine building. Engine building is an aspect of play, not a game mechanic that's intentionally put into a game. Right. It's and, something that evolves or happens. And, and I actually, I have to say, I kind of agree with this. To me, it is an application of mechanics. Yep. So um, deck building can lead to engine building mm -hmm. and, and the different, the different component mechanics that we talk about in, in, in various episodes and, and in various games can form an engine building system in the game, but it's those components working together to create your engine right. building application within the game uh, so much as it itself being a mechanic. Again, you, it's hard to define a mechanic as this thing that's built up of a whole bunch of other mechanics. Right. So it, it's more of a meta mechanic, so I guess. I guess that's fair. The thing is, I think it's a useful term when talking about the kind of games we like. Oh, absolutely. I, it's like, just whether or not it's a I mechanic. It's, 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 uh, yeah. it's more of a type than a mechanic, perhaps. Possibly. I don't know. I like To me it's every mechanics of some of other mechanics put together in different ways, right? Like, like deck building is just a, a version of card drafting and it's a version of um, hand management. It's a version of resource management all thrown together using cards, right? right. Like I, yep. to me, I think there's enough games that have a very similar feel by having those same mechanics put together that I would call them all engine builders because they all use those same things put together. And I, I welcome Roger to the chat room. Right, absolutely. You're, you're joining in partway through your topic. You're going to have to listen to hear, hear the beginning again. Um, so moving on to 
the fact that definitely not all games are engine builders. There are, are some games that are very much just aren't in any way whatsoever. Uh, the first thing that came to mind, this is actually goes back to another one of Roger's topics, is Euchre or traditional trick card game game taking games or ladder card games or pretty much every traditional card game like the cribbage and all of them uh and the gambling games they lack permanence right there, there's no engine every round is basically a standalone game every trick in euchre could be a standalone game who wins that trick then everything sets me again there's there's nothing there's no permanence there's no engine there's no you can't have a good euchre hand build on that for your next euchre hand it just doesn't work yep Another example are pretty much, I, I can't say all, but most abstract games. So your chess checkers go and modern equivalents, right? Sandrini, Onitama, Luke. Um, Azul is, is borderline because there is the whole scoring engine where if you build your tiles next to each other, again, I still think to be called an engine builder, you need to, it needs to be the, the main mechanic yeah. of the game. And it is most uh, definitely yeah, I not. Think, I think calling Azul an engine builder is, is a <laughs> That's stretch. really stretching it. Yeah, it's stretching it. it. It has, again, it has an engine building aspect yep. that you can get a point scoring combo going by building tiles in a certain order. So there is that small aspect of it. But again, in no way would I call it a, an engine builder. Um, and there are a number like this, we're talking about traditional card games and abstract games and, and roll and move games. Again, roll and move games. There's not the snakes and ladders or a million licensed board games that came out when Sean and I were kids. We're not engine builders. You rolled the dice, you did what happens, right? And then you rolled the dice and did it again. There, there was no way to build up an engine or even a strategy in those games. But it's not just old games. Like there are a number of hobby board games that don't have any engine building aspects as well. Uh, the one that came to my mind right away is Carcassonne. Like there, there's no engine building. You build the city or you build a road and you put your meeple on it. Like there, there's no way to run an engine. There's no way to look at the thing I did three turns ago, pay off now. It doesn't happen. Yep. So I think to me, if you're, if you're designing a game, and again, I'm, I'm still not necessarily of the opinion that it is a specific mechanic, but if you are designing a game with the concept of engine uh, building in mind, it requires a different mindset and a, a set because you need your players to have a deeper knowledge of what is possible in the future. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what is possible, uh, how can you plan the initial stages of your engine? Right. So how can you lay down the groundwork for an engine if you have no idea what's coming in the future? Mm -hmm. um, so both the lack of knowledge and a high level of randomness can yes. impact the potential of engine building in the very design level of a game. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree. Now, there are a number of games that have a small amount of engine building that I wouldn't call engine building, like even more than Azul. Like Azul is, is about as far as I'm willing to stretch. Um, so Roger mentioned Monopoly. Really, the only engine building you get is the houses and hotels, which, yes, it can be a big part of winning the game. It's a very small aspect of the game overall. Like really, it's a roll and move trading and economic game with auctions that played properly that has a small engine building aspect. Like, it, and, and it's so random, the chance that you land on the right property and then lose all your money to another player. And I think the same is true for Catan, though I did see Catan on a number of best engine building lists. And I, I disagree with this because while building multiple settlements or cities on a resource you need does lead to getting more of a resource, it's a small engine. I don't think it's a big enough part of the game to classify as an engine builder. And the other thing is there's no agency here. There, there's no, I can't choose to run that engine. It's, it's complete happenstance that I happen to get it. The actual engine working and running is based on luck. Players have to land on the right spot, the other players often, or the right number has to come up on the, roll, on, on the resource dice. You don't get to choose to run the engine, which goes back to what we talked about right at the beginning. Sean mentioned about how it, uh, an, an engine by definition has to do something on its own. Right. And now I have to say, I, I do agree a little bit. I disagree with you on this one. I have to say Monopoly is at its very heart, an economic, economic engine builder. You, you, the, the goal is to buy properties, to develop properties. And as you go, so buying a property gives you income, which allows you to develop the property, which gives you greater income, which allows you to develop property further and greater income yeah. and so on and so forth. And, and yes, there is a randomness aspect, which reduces that, but Due to the fact that it's 2D6, the bell curve gives you more advanced knowledge uh, than a, a purely random game uh, in how to plan for it. And, you know, entire books have been written on strategies to take advantage oh, yeah. of 
um, where players are more likely to land than than otherwise. Um, so I, I do have to say that as an economic uh, engine builder, Monopoly to me does hit all the the marks. I don't, but you're not putting any parts together. You're well, you not. Are, you're, you're building your. It's it's it's. So you t- again, if we go back to that original uh, definition we talked about at the beginning, you're taking uh, item A, which is your initial seed money. Mm-hmm. You're you're turning that into property, which is then turned back into cash, which is then turned into buildings on your property, which is then turned into cash, which is then turned into yeah. You definitely on your there's definitely the escalation. There's there's, there's um, that aspect of it. So I to me it, it it hits all those things. It is reduced in its effectiveness as an engine builder because of the randomness. Yeah. But I don't think that stops it from being a. Uh, uh, it's just not a great engine builder because of the well, other problems with all the, the other problems with Monopoly. <laughs> yes, but uh, but I, to me it is it, it hits it hits all the the things the check boxes that we li- defined earlier on. All right, fair enough. All right, moving on from Monopoly, I was thinking most war games and miniature games. Like I, 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 I can't think of any engine building in Warhammer 40k or, um, I, I don't know, Public of Rome or Fields of Glory. Like I, I don't know. There are exceptions. Like um, the one one thing I can think of is if there's any type of forming producing units right getting more units out on the board those are sometimes tied to some form of engine so axis and allies you can build factories factories give you more points to put out more units but again that just is such a small part of axis and allies um there are others similar to that i think that yeah. again i it's more on the the war and the interaction and controlling areas than building an engine now it's it similarly risk now, one of the interesting things to me is, and this this goes with these war games as well as some earlier mass market games that we're trying to capitalize again on the concept of monopoly. Um, but one of the big things that the differentiates to me is if you can have dramatic loss of engine, it's okay. not an engine builder. Uh, in monopoly, once you get going, it, it, there's no there's no gotcha that that blows away all your properties. Right. Whereas in a games like Risk, you know, all of a sudden you lose the country and you you lose that function. Or there were a bunch of mass market games where you've 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 developed something. Uh, there's a movie maker game that I like, um, but you can go through all this time to build this engine of a movie that generates income for for mm-hmm. you. But if you land on the wrong spot on the board, that whole thing is just gone, uh, all right. of the blue. And to me that breaks it as an engine builder because yes, again, there's a little bit of engine building, but the fact that your engine can be thrown away in an instant right. stops it from being an engine building game. Yeah. And that's, that's what I was, gonna, I was about to mention myself because the more countries you own, the more units you get to produce. And then the more units you can produce, the more territories you can take over and so on. And you get that steamroller effect. But to me, again, it's, it's, you're only building on one thing too. There's no, there's no building. There's just, just, you just get more of the thing. And I think that's, I think that's where I'm missing in my discussion on monopoly is you're only, there's one aspect. There's, there's one piece and you're putting more pieces on. And I think for me to think of a good engine builder, at least, or what I want to call an engine builder game, you need options. You need more than one part you can pick from. So it's not just the progression of I get more stuff, therefore I get more stuff. And I, because I have more stuff, I can get more stuff. It's the you have an option. It's a, right. do I go for this or this? Do I add this piece on or that piece on? And I think that's the part that's missing from Risk, Axis, and Allies and Monopoly. Well, is, I, it's, it's, a, it's an engine, but it's built out of one part. Yeah, and I, I won't it's, deny it's that tower. Monopoly is a simple engine builder. But yeah. I still, it, I still think it fits our because of the definition we've reduced that definition yeah, yeah. down to its basics. We do hit it. Whereas risk, I would, I would argue less so. Again, because of that, I, the, again, permanence is one of those big things that we've yeah, talked the about over and over. Yeah, definitely gone. If if you if you're able to have your entire engine gone in a flash, it it it's not the engine builder game. It's just a tiny piece right. of engine building. So another type of game that, again, don't feature um, very little, if any, engine building are your folk on the map area control area majority games. Again, this is the risk kind of feel falls in here, too. It's a, a mashup between war games and area control. They're, they're like they're about building units, right? And the combat system is usually the focus, whether that combat system is dropping cubes in a tower or it's rolling a bunch of dice or it's card play. It's Oh, sometimes about finding combinations, right? Like attacking from the right spot or using the right set of cards at a time, but very few feature any form of engine building. And the one game that I was thinking of in my head was Cry Havoc being a 
uh, Waro, right? A, a mashup of Euro game and and board game where there's definitely there's different armies and there's all these aspects and there's bits of deck building where you build up your deck but like i don't remember ever running an engine while playing at least feeling like i had an engine going I, I might get a combo off one turn or i might be able to capture some territory due to some lucky card play but i didn't feel like i had a, a war machine moving across the the army that was unstoppable because i built this perfect engine of cards and units it just didn't give me that feeling so yeah. I, again i think there's an aspect of putting thing, different things together to make something bigger that is missing from those games Yep. No, absolutely. And I mean, you look at something, you know, even a simplest, simplistic uh, miniature games like Blood Bowl, right? It's not an engine builder. And again, the dice are a big, the randomness yeah. is that huge, is a huge aspect that stops you. Even if you thought you could, you know, have these orcs move into this position and, and this and that, and then all of a sudden you roll the dice and so much for that. Yeah. So, so, so Roger in the chat room is mentioning route building can be a type of engine building. To me, it depends on the game. It depends on what you do with those routes. Can you run an engine? Or is it a race to get the longest route to the end or, or to get between the cities? So an example of that is I'll admit I have not played Empire Builder. I don't shame on me. It's a famous enough game. And I even have a copy downstairs or any of the Crayon Rail games. But I look at Steam. In Steam, I'm connecting routes. And the engine builds in the fact that at the beginning of the game, I only have trains that can go between two cities. And then later in the game, I build better trains and I can go more cities. But unless I can set up an engine where I'm going to produce red goods in this city and be able to run them through five routes to get the multiple points and do that multiple times, I'm gonna run more red. Now I'm gonna run more red. It's not much of an engine to me. Now Steam does have that. Steam has a way to repopulate route uh, um, cubes in a city. And if you have a city, a, a combo basically set up where you have a bunch of routes connected in a certain pattern so that it's always five away and you can see ahead that there are three different ways to put red cubes on that city. Your engine could be a red cube engine in, in Steam. So Steam has aspects of it. But I don't know if the crayon rail ones have that. I think it's just about you get the points. Like I don't know of a progression where, yes, you start off with a small route, you end up with something bigger. But I don't think any game where what you have grows necessarily means it's an engine builder. It has to do something. It has to, you have to be able to run it. You have to be able to, to do the thing the engine's built to do to get the end result. Again, usually being points. And someone did mention in the chat, and I forget who now, is there, are there any games where it doesn't lead to points? And I, often, I just feel like there is, but I can't think of a specific example. Well, I think a lot of times the, the, the question is, you know, what are you calling points? In Monopoly, you yes. call your points money. You know, you call your points dollars, but they're still victory points. Um, so... A lot of like time. 18xx games, I don't think of as engine building either, because it's all about manipulating the stock market, right? Like it's it's not about setting up a system of tracks and routes that generate you income every turn, because if you do a really good one of those, someone buys you out your stocks and they're not yours anymore. Right. So you you, you lose that permanence again. Like Sean said, someone can go in and break it down and take it away from you, and I think that's one aspect. Now, I know we said we weren't going to go back to the chat until we got to the end of this, but I think it's worth going there now before we move on to some game recommendations. Is there anything else you saw in there? Uh, that, so uh, 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 people are wondering, you know, when we got, we got talking about deck builders there, um, is Harry Potter a deck builder? Uh, I, I, See, and that's... I, again, it has, it has some elements of it, but the biggest thing that's missing in that game is any way to tweak your deck until later with the later expansion. Right, and even in the, the later fact expansions... you can't tweak your engine, the fact yeah. you can't streamline your deck makes it a very... If it is, if anyone considers an engine building game, again, I don't think it's about engine building. So right. to me, right then, it's not an engine builder. It's not about building an engine to defeat the bad guys, even though that's the goal of the game, but that's not what, really what you do with your deck. You're more, you're trying to protect your health and you're trying to buy some bigger cards to eventually, and you're also trying to remove the location things of whatever yeah. the doom marks. Like it, it's not it's, build an engine to do the most damage possible. And there's enough yes. random and there's enough randomness in it to really break engines pretty quickly. Yes. Uh, especially at the further into it you get. Um, I, I would say no, well, again, there are engine building aspects. It is not an engine builder. Um, and interestingly, uh, Ryan uh, says, I don't think Star Realms is an engine builder per se, a combo builder. Well, so again, there, it, that's it, a, there's, it, a, there's a different terminology, and, and I think I can understand that. Um, again, because there is no permanence in Star Realms. Right. See, again, it's the permanence of your deck. I think it's more of an engine builder than, say, Ascension. Because Absolutely. of that combo building. That's, yeah. That was the argument at the time. 
that it's more of an engine builder, but I still think deck builders are their own thing. Yeah. Now, now, to make that an interesting conversation, we should bring up Core Worlds. Right. That's a deck builder where you build a tableau, but when you take over a planet, that tableau wipes, and you right. have to keep rebuilding it. So is that an engine builder where you keep building engines, and then they crumble, and then you build them again? I actually think it is because there is no way at the beginning of the game you would have enough military strength or whatever the two types of military strength to ever take over a core world. Meanwhile, by the end of the game, you should have a deck that should be able to take multiple core worlds. And as the game progresses and builds, I think it actually has a lot of engine building aspects more than most deck builders. Right. But again, it doesn't have that permanence. Or it does, because it's weird, right? Like you have that whole <laughs> Yeah. You've got you, you attack permits. a planet and you use up your resources right, and right. then they go back in so, your deck until so you you're 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 building an engine knowing that it's going to go away if it has done its job. Yeah, and actually there, that's actually a totally different look at it. Most engine building games I'm thinking of, you build one engine and it lasts the whole game. That you start at turn one with something small and at turn ten, the end of the game you have something big. Right. I that actually doesn't always fit for all games. Because I, I think I'm thinking, it's valid that a type of engine building yeah. would be to build something, use it, and then build something again. Because I'm thinking, uh, my, my, my thought goes to the DC deck building game where, you know, if you've built your engine your, of your deck correctly, you know, you're not stuck with five cards. You're going to get through 25 cards or even your whole yeah, deck keep... in order to defeat the bad guy. And, and, and then next round, there's a new bad guy up and you've got to hope your cards come up in the right order to... Right. Build the full deck out completely or build your engine out completely to defeat the bad guy again and watch your opponent cry. Um. No, no, exactly. That, what, that's why I'm like, I want to say deck builders are engine builders. I just don't think they all are. Again, they're like, a, when you can get different. that perfectly tuned deck where you draw your entire deck in one hand, like Star Realms, I've done it many yep, times yep. using the red cards where you can draw your entire deck every round and do whatever by 50 points of damage in one round and then you're like all right it's your turn now it's my turn again oh draw 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 oops my whole deck again 50 points that's an engine right like you managed to fine-tune your deck to a point where it can work and, and this is where we get into the problem i think the board game geek had and why it's not included is because this is so meta again well, we're yeah. describing the use of other mechanics, mechanics yes. into a system that is either a, a one engine builder or a multiple, you know, repeated engine builder, or again, it, it's this meta use mm -hmm. of mechanics into a system that we define as an engine builder, but is an overarching yeah. concept. So I, I still, I, I think the term's valid. I think it's useful to talk about. Now I will say every game that we're going to get to in the recommendations is a start small, build big. You don't lose a halfway through. Cause I didn't even think of that until the talking about core worlds being an example of one where you build your engine, use it, and then have to build a new one, Right. which is a, a, I think a really interesting use of, I guess we call it engine building. Yeah. I don't know. To me, it's still, I, I, it definitely doesn't apply to every game. Every game is not an engine building. Not every game is about an escalation of getting more of a thing. Like, I think that's part of it. It's an, it's an escalation from the beginning to the end. It's not, you're going to try to to be as efficient as possible and get the most out of say 10 points every turn. And you're going to get seven this round and nine next round and six next round. It never goes up, right? That's, that's your standard game is you're trying to do the thing to get you what you're going to win over and over and over again. Whereas an engine builder is I'm going to get five points. I'm going to get 10 points. I'm going to get 30 points. I'm going to get 90 points. I'm going to get 120 points. Uh, a great example of one that I didn't put on the list. I'm going to mention here is power grid. If you look at your income and power grid as you play through it's a great example of the feel of an engine builder that you start off the game and you run your one power plant and you make your big seven dollars woohoo and then the last round you got seven to twelve different plants up and you get all this money and but the interesting part about power grid is the money means nothing you actually get points you actually win based on how many powered cities you have which is why it's such a, a popular game is yes, you can build that economic engine, but unless you're using it to build power plants, it doesn't matter. Right. So I don't know. Let's, let's see if we can summarize it all. So <laughs> what, what, do we have a, a summary on here? So you start off small, you build big, you have, it has to be able to run on its own. I think that was part of it. Yeah. And I think and, and permanence, permanence, whether or not, whether or not it, it it's, Temporary permanence or repeatable permanence. I think we're just going to stick to, to, <laughs> to permanent permanence. Like yeah. the repeatable, I think is an exception. I think, right. So, I think, so, like so like we're, we're pushing deck. We're, we're pushing the deck world, the deck builders off to the side yeah, as their own a branch branch. Right. 
they're a brand. Like, again, there are many games that have engine building aspects that I wouldn't call engine builders. Now, an example is is uh, Dominion is very much about building an engine with your deck to buy more cards to get those victory point cards right. because it's it's a very different style it's, it's closer to engine building the most deck builders that progressed after it which tried to throw in themes and multiple resources and combos and other stuff whereas dominion on its own is all about buying the most and, and know what i think changes too it doesn't have the variable market you right. are presented it's what you talked about how one of the things you need for an engine builder knowledge. is knowledge of the future like knowledge of what's going to score you points or what's going to come up where dominion has that whereas star realms ascension core worlds none of those have that right dominion it's 10 cards are up at the start of the game those are the 10 cards you have to use every game and use those cards to make the most efficient engine you can right so i know i'm, I'm contradicting some of the stuff we said <laughs> earlier in a way so there's a scale of engine building and every game is somewhere on that scale i think is is probably the best way to look at it there we go all right, well. All right, so I think that's enough about games that are, are are not engine builders and may not be engine builders. Here are some games, great games in my opinion, that to me most definitely are engine builders. Now, as usual, this for us, this list is in no particular order. And it might be. I, I think I rated them by complexity, but I didn't want to like come out and say, these <laughs> are rated by complexity. But I did that as I was going through because I had some... Um, synergies between a couple of these in a row so the one i'm going to start off with is not my favorite game uh people have heard me complain about it now and then and that is splendor i just think splendor needs to be on this list because it is the perfect example of a very pure engine builder it's an abstract gateway engine building game you're gonna use gems to buy cards that give you free gems that are gonna let you buy more cards that will give you more free gems to eventually let you buy better cards to give you points and maybe you'll get uh, the right combination of gems to get a bonus scoring point to a noble card i it it's literally is like the most basic definition of an engine builder start small Yep. get the cards to build your engine run your engine to get the stuff that gives you points yeah and so you're 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 transferring uh materials from from a to b and you have permanent no one can no one can destroy your engine as you go Correct. uh and it, it does it builds from nothing to you know the be the best at the end yeah uh, and that was splendor Next, I have Gizmos. This, to me, is a, a better example of an engine building game to me because the theme ties in with Gizmos, right? It really is an engine builder. This is, this is you are at a science fair. You're trying to build a science fair project piece by piece, um, attempting to build a Rube Goldberg-like style engine that you hope will eventually become this thing that makes you a ton of points. Um you hope each piece you add to your gizmo is part of a big chain reaction because you have things like, okay, because I grabbed a yellow energy, I get to pick another energy. And because the second one I picked is red, I can build a red card for free. And when I build a red card for free, I get to file a card away. And when I file a card away, I get five points, right? Like that's the, the whole game. And it, to me, this is a great way to go. When someone goes, what's an engine builder? I'm like, here, sit down and play gizmos. And I'll show you like the, the, the purity of an engine builder. And uh, the one nice thing about Gizmos is while there is an aspect of randomness in the marble drop, because of the um, stack of uh, marbles that you can see, that reduces the randomness out. Yeah, no, so, so Gizmos is great because it reduces that randomness. There is randomness to it, which makes it Yeah, well, there's know, the marbles game. plus there's which, which pieces come out each but, round. But there's, because you can see the stack of marbles, you know, however many four or five marbles it is in advance, um, you, you, you know a certain amount of the future, even though the, mm -hmm. the distance future is unknown, you do get a little peek into the future there to, to plan with. Yeah, and you can see what other cards are up in the, in the market too to see yeah. what level two and level three cards you might eventually want to buy. Yep. Yeah. And that was Gizmos. All right. If you like Gizmos, you've tried Gizmos, you like it, you're a hobby gamer, you've got that game down. Steamworks is what I would recommend next as the advanced version of Gizmos. This is another pure engine building game where you are literally building a machine to score points in front of you. Every round for our plants and components that come up on a central market and it's set up like a conveyor belt, right? Like stuff comes in on the right, comes up on the left. You're going to have stuff from that. 
and you're going to use them to build machines in your own tableau and these are like puzzle fit pieces that literally put together and every new machine you have becomes a new worker placement spot that can be used by all of the players in future turns and then round after round your machines grow and do more things and it might be that you put a worker here you get to choose a resource and when you choose a resource a thing happens like this is the very definition of engine building where you are literally building little machines to get you things in the game including scoring points it is a, is a definitely a step above gizmos for complexity but a very well done game where you are like the theme is so tied like you are building engines in in this game and that was steamworks all right up next i've got terraforming mars uh this is the game on the list i personally played the most often at least in the last few years there is one more i probably played more over time um well you can play terraforming mars without trying to build an engine you could just buy whatever cards happen to come up, whatever ones you can afford, or you could stick to all um, core projects and never build any of the, the cards from your hand. The key to actually playing Terraforming Mars well is to find the synergies between the various project cards and build an engine out of what you're dealt. Now, where Terraforming Mars really shines is the variety and number of these potential engines created from these cards. Are you gonna collect microbes and animals? Or are you gonna and keep putting little cubes on your cards that'll score a ton of points at the end of the game? Or are you gonna just keep, try to generate plants and put forests all over the whole planet? Or are you gonna try to get your terraforming rating up as quick as possible so you'll have enough money that you don't even have to worry about anything and just buy those big point cards by the end of the game? Like there are uh, probably an infinite number of potential engines in this game with the number of cards that are in it. And see, interestingly, one of the reasons I'm not great at Terraforming Mars is having not played it enough, I don't have the level of knowledge of the future that mm -hmm. you and D have. So I struggle to think when I'm looking at, you know, especially even that drafting, when you're drafting those initial cards, trying to think about all the possible things that do yeah. exist that can be done later. I, I can't necessarily play, uh, remember them all or think of them all or right. know them all. So it is more difficult as a newer player or a player who mm -hmm. isn't as familiar with the game to really get a strong enough engine compared to people who are, you know, intimately familiar with the game. Yeah. This is a problem actually when you first teach the game is people are always looking at their individual hand of cards and like, well, what are microbe cubes for? What, 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 what do I want these plants for? And I'm like, well, just wait, you'll see it. Like uh, you can't really explain it ahead of time. Yep. It's like, well, you're going to have to see it because there are going to be other cards that use those things, especially some of the early card. Well, the cheap cards that are like, put a microbe on this card and it does nothing. It just collects microbes or the ones are like, move a microbe from this card to another card. And you're like, why would I want to do that? And I'm just kind of like, until you played, you're just kind of like, well, just wait and see. Maybe yeah. you'll see it. Cause maybe you'll do it. that is also why I do recommend though we don't even do it all the time is if you do play from Mars, you should use the drafting variant where because then it's easier to build those engines because you're going to see more different cards and it reduces that random factor which we said before hurts engine building games because if they're too random you you're, you can't build an engine because you don't get the cards you want which right. is i will admit even with drafting a problem in terraforming mars you may decide you are going to build titanium and build spaceships and that's it and never see another titanium or spaceship card for the rest of the game it happens that is an aspect of that game and that was Terraforming Mars. All right, I mentioned Terraforming Mars being my most played game. Now, again, that's in recent times. I play Terraforming Mars a lot. Before that, though, was Race for the Galaxy. That is by far my most played game of all times, with over 200 plays. Um, this, again, similar to Terraforming Mars. Building an engine in Race for the Galaxy is not necessary. You could just build random planets or build random discovery cards and build the ones that are worth the most points having some form of engine is pretty much required to win now this engine could be to slowly build up military strength so that you start with one military strength and you conquer a one world which gives you two more military strength so then you conquer a three which gives you more military strength but you conquer a five and so on or it could be collecting luxury good planets blue ones and setting up an engine to produce sell and consume those goods over and over while not having nearly the amount of options as terraforming mars one of the best parts about Race for the Galaxy, though, is the number of different engines you can attempt to build. And the difficulty in that game, playing it well, especially having played so many times, is starting off the beginning and deciding where to go. What, what engine to even go with. 
Well, and again, the, one of the, the faults of Race for the Galaxy, not that I, I have any complaints about it, is the randomness, right? You yeah. could start on a military strategy and then never get a military card. It's unlikely, but yeah. not impossible. Yeah, and that's where that Explore Plus 5 no one actually likes to do actually comes in handy. <laughs> yeah. But again, like you complained about Terraforming Mars, or complained being a strong word, is you need to know the cards. You need yep. to know what to plan for in Race for the Galaxy. Otherwise, you're like, oh, I got this awesome yellow card. I'm going to build it. Well, aliens are kind of rare and they're hard to build and you can't use things that reduce the terraforming rating to build them easier. And if you don't know that, you could very easily start off going, I'm going to go all aliens and get messed up because you can't. And that was Race for the Galaxy. All right, next I've got Fleet. This is an engine building game about building a fishing fleet. You start off with one simple boat and a contract to catch one type of fish. By the end of the game, you're going to have an entire fleet of ships and a number of different contracts. What I really like about this is, besides having one of the best auction mechanics in the game stolen from Power Grid, is the great decision points in this game. Whether when when the contract auction comes up and do you do you double down because if you have multiples of the same contract they get better so do you want to specialize in one type of fish or do you want to diversify which ships to sail and which to keep for money because it uses multi-use cards again this is taken from race for the galaxy or san juan where you're using the same cards to put ships into play as you're using to pay for other ships so try and decide what to do with that like this is one every time i read about fleet or see it i'm like man i gotta get fleet back to the table like i was so impressed by this game when i first played it and i just it doesn't get to the table very often and i need to get it out it's on the it's in the stack behind me like, man i gotta play fleet maybe maybe this weekend just it's been too long great engine building game with of all things a fishing theme and that was fleet Next, I have St. Petersburg. This is a Russian nobility uh, in the city of St. Petersburg themed game that has a great slow ramp up from start to finish. You're going to start with just one or maybe two workers who are going to generate you a bit of money. You're going to use that money to buy some buildings probably that'll generate you a little bit more money, but make sure to save some to buy some more farmers the next round. Uh, or you could hire some nobles. Or in the second edition of the game, which I actually do recommend, start setting up some trade routes. And then again, by the end of the game, you've got this tableau filled with workers, a whole bunch of workers bringing you tons of rubies in. Rupal, sorry. you got a city's worth of buildings, a full house of aristocracy, and probably a very diverse market if playing with the expansion. And hopefully all of this is working together to generate you points by the end of the game. And what I like in this one is... Unlike we talked about earlier, games earlier where you you, re, you lose your engine and it falls apart and you have to rebuild it, you have to change your engine because generally about midway through the game, you have to switch from trying to generate income to switching to generate points instead. And one of the things you can do in this game is you can replace buildings by building over top of them and you get a discount, right, for doing it. So you kind of shift your engine from doing one thing to another and deciding when to do that is such a big part of this game. Yeah, no, it's uh, changing gears is something we never really talk about in our definition, yeah. but that's definitely um, an aspect of something to do. And in this one, uh, like many of the games where changing gears is an issue, it's all about timing. You don't want to change too soon or your point engine isn't enough to to push your you know cash engine or your cash engine isn't enough to push your point engine across the finish line or you've gone too late and you've you know, you're, you're, you, the changeover doesn't happen fast enough. And again, you you haven't ramped up fast enough. You either peter off or don't ramp up fast enough. And that is St. Petersburg. You peter off in St. Petersburg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, I've got Keyflower. Now, this one features a number, a large number of integrated and interlocking mechanics. Um, it includes worker placement, and auctions, and drafting, and tile placement, and tile laying. And, but one of the most important things in this game by the end of the game is figuring out some form of engine that lets you upgrade the tiles you've already purchased in your area and flip them over and then getting your resources from your resource generation tiles to your storage tiles. And hopefully those are upgraded versions because they score a lot of points. Now, one of the problems with this game is that this requirement to build an engine isn't obvious the first time you play. You're like, yeah, I'm going to get forests because they produce wood. I don't know why I want wood, but now I want wood. You don't see until round three that you can build the storage shed that scores one victory point for every two wood that's in it. 
Plus, it's easy to get distracted just trying to like build the biggest territory because a big part of the game is auctions to get these territories. And you feel like you want to build the biggest thing or you want to have the most meeple for your auctions. You may not notice where the actual end game points come from, which has to do with having upgraded tiles and having resources in, in the right place. What I do like, though, is the slow progression of complexity in this one, where, again, you're starting off with you have one tile in the first round, you're going to draft maybe one or two more, and your number of options are fairly limited, and then they grow as the game goes on, as they do in all of these engine building games. And that was Keyflower. Next, I have a game that I felt I had to put on the list for Sean's sake, <laughs> if nothing else, and that is Pulsar 2849. Now, this has a few different engine building aspects in this sci-fi Euro game. And I don't even know, like, like there are engine building aspects and I think you call it an engine builder, but it's much more dice drafting and stuff like that. But there are so many different engines you can work on in this game. Like the, the most obvious is claiming, building and spinning up gyrodynes, right? That's your, one of your main ways to get points in this game. You're, you, there's a three-step process. You have to go claim one, then you have to build one, then you have to spin it up. You definitely have an engine going there. And if you do it early in the game, your points are just going to keep uh, accumulating as the game goes on but then there's also the tech tree which is randomized every game and combining that tech tree with the hq boards the player boards to do some other scoring system and i say some other because there's other lots of ways to do it so like one of them is let you move explore faster on the board well if you combo that with your hq board where you do what they call the gate runs where you go through a bunch of the same colored gates to get points right so you can kind of set that engine up or it could be using the array system pretty much the entire array system is an engine system where you are building components to generate something now arrays can generate points or you could use them to make technology cubes and technology cubes could be a way to get you bonus dice actions or they could be friend game scoring right like there's just so many different things and like like the other games on this list the best part about this is that none of these systems are objectively better than the other like you're gonna win if you do arrays or you're gonna win if you spin up gyrodyne it's not like that it's all about figuring out what works best based on especially what the other players are doing yeah no i this one this one is fantastic because they really are you know some games it's like oh well, i could do this or i could do this but i've seen people try this tech this path in other games and i've never seen anyone win the game with it whereas in this game they're all pretty much viable techniques depending on your board and the technology tree that day yeah. and, and what and dice so, are up and, yeah and so yeah. on and so forth um so again there is an aspect of randomness uh, but if things aren't breaking, there is permanence, and uh, that is Pulsar 2849. Up next is one of my favorite games on the list. If I just want to play a, a heavier engine building game, that is Russian Railroads. Because I got to say, what's a better theme for engine building than building engines, railroad engines, and the tracks they run on? Uh, this is not a route building game at all. This is just an abstract game. That is, I, in my opinion, my favorite, the best pure engine building game on this list, where you start off with almost nothing and end up with a lot. This is a game where literally in turn one, you're like lucky if you scored eight points. Like most people are going to get three to five. And then the last round, people are going to score 230 points in one round. Like that progression from eight to 200 in eight rounds of play. I love that feel of that game. It's all about upgrading your stuff to generate your more points. There's three different railroads to upgrade. And then you're changing the technology of the railroads and you're converting them over from brass to copper. To, I don't even remember the different types. There's like six different steps and upgrading your engines so they can travel farther. You're going to build factories that increase your score output. It's all about building these various parts just to make you more points. That's the goal. Every round, you want to make more points than last round and hopefully more points than everyone else. Of all the games on the list, this is the one to me that has the most satisfying feeling of having built something in the end. Like, even if I don't win, it's like, oh, that last turn, I made 380 points. I just feel like I did something. I built something and I got rewarded for doing it. And that is Russian Railroads. And bonus points if you can find the German Railroads expansion, which just adds even more options to the game. <laughs> Finally, I am going to finish off with the heaviest, meatiest, mathiest game on the list. No, this isn't Power Grid. Uh, this is Arkwright. This is, as far as I know, probably the heaviest engine building game out there on all complexity and weight scales. Uh, Food Chain Magnet might be up there too, but I personally found Arkwright more brain burning. Uh, the, the, what I like about this and why I want to put it on the list is for a sense of scale. 
where you can compare a game like Splendor that I can teach you to play in five minutes to a game like Arkwright, where the last time I played, people had calculators out and were taking notes to make sure that they didn't mess up their economics on the last turn. You start this game off, this is a turn of the century, the invention of automation with the spinning Jenny. You start with one warehouse and one machine and two workers that can produce one good, and you end up building a manufacturing empire. This is a game with a ton of hard decisions to make, um, ranging from whether to stick with only one or two warehouses and good types or diversify into all four different types, how many workers to hire, how many goods to produce. You want to meet demand, but you don't want to have more than demand because then your products go to waste. Do you replace your workers with automation? It's a high cost to do so, but are you going to make the money back by not paying wages? Or right now where everyone's automating, so there's workers available everywhere because everyone's out of work, so everyone's cheap. Like This is a beast, but in my opinion, worth learning if you're into heavier games. And that was Arkwright. All right. As we've done in probably for the last year or so, when we do these lists, we are going to throw in a few honorable mentions. I got five of them tonight. And I think I'll mention why when I get to each game. So we got five honorable mentions tonight that are great engine builder games, but didn't fit on my main list for one reason or another. Number one is a game that anyone who's been paying any attention to board games for the last year and a half has heard of, and that is Wingspan. I don't think you can have a list of engine building games without mentioning this big hit. Um, I don't own it. That's the whole reason it's on the list. I haven't gotten to try it. Uh, before we started locking down for COVID, it was already almost impossible to find. It does seem like uh, Stonemeyer ended up with production that you can get the game pretty regularly now. Uh, the problem I have with this game, well, it's not necessarily a problem, is it seems light. It seems it's going to be at that Splendor level, maybe a step above. And I worry for me, it's going to be too light to be enjoyable to play often. So it's not one I'm going to go to my local game store and pick up without having to play it. So that's a try before I buy for me. I want to play Wingspan. It probably belongs on this list. I probably love it. Maybe it's a better gateway than Splendor. I just don't know. I haven't done it myself. And I can't deny the number of other people who love this game. So, And that is Wingspan. Now, another huge hit of last year is Everdell. Everyone keeps talking about Everdell. Every single when you Google best worker play or best engine building game, if as long as the, the, the post you're looking at is from 2019 or newer, you're going to have Everdell on here based on everything I've read. I'm pretty sure I'll love this one. Like this is one, this was on my wish list. I, I would have, I, I, if I had the spare money, I might buy this site unseen if I didn't have a pile of games to play already. Uh, the table presence. Man, does this game look good. The card design. The fact there's a tree that goes out on the table to hold the cards. I've seen some great looking 3D component upgrades. I have heard so many good things about Everdell. And, well, it's a tableau builder, right? So I'm sure this has tons of engine building aspects. Not having it played up myself, I couldn't put it on this list. But like I said, it's on everyone else's engine building hot list. So everyone else in the world recommends Everdell's. <laughs> And that was Everdell. Next, I've got Underwater Cities. Um, I've mentioned this one before. As a game, people tell me kills Terraforming Mars. And while everyone knows how much I love Terraforming Mars, so the game that kills it's got to be good, right? I just haven't had a chance to play it. I have been at events where friends, I've sat down at the table and had the game taught to me, but then had to leave because I was hosting the event and some new gamers showed up and I got them hooked up with something else. So like, I just haven't had a chance to play it. So I was going to buy this. I'm like, I'm done. I'm going to buy Underwater Cities. I, I keep hearing about it. It's going to be good. Well, Rio Grande Games used to publish it. They lost the license or sold it, I don't know, to Capstone Games. And for at least three months there, when I had the budget and ability to buy it, it was out of print. And yes, I know I can now get it from Capstone, but I got a bunch of games for my birthday and it just, it's in there. I am going to apply this one sometime. I have to do it. So the next time I have spare budget and time to play a new game, Underwater Cities is way up there on my wish list, but haven't played it myself. Couldn't tell you. And that was Underwater Cities. All right. Fantastic Factories. I know nothing about this game. Like I literally had never heard of it. I saw the cover. The cover doesn't stick out much to me. It just looks like it reminds me of power grid, which I like. So I guess I should like it, but this one suddenly showed up on like everyone's best of 2020 list like that. Everyone's like, Oh man, did you play fantastic factories. And like, this was one of Tom Vassell's best games. And he said, it's one of the best engine builders he's ever built. So I took a quick look at it. Like I'm board game geek in that know what it sounds like is a slimmed down, streamlined, accessible version of Arkwright. 
it's all about building factories and making the most money from your factories. And I gotta say, it looks cool. Um, that's about all I know about this one. This is this is one I, I'd love to have a demo night. I could show up and try it out or something like that because I don't know much more. But definitely well regarded by um, a number of uh, board game influencers, I guess we'll call them. <laughs> and that is Fantastic Factories. And finally, I have Le Havre. One of the things we talked about with engine building and one of the things we think is key to engine building, we both agreed on this, is taking something and turning it into something else. And there is no other game that exemplifies this better, in my opinion, than Uwe Rosenberg's classic Le Havre. This is considered by many people to be Uwe's best game ever made. I own this one. It's in the pile behind here. I just traded for it late last year. I am looking forward to sitting down and playing it myself. I admit I did play this once, but it was at a public play event and there were player problems, we'll just say. And I didn't get to enjoy the game due to do the player issues during the game, but it's all about getting the goods and upgrading the goods and changing them from one type of good to another good to eventually sell them to get victory points and tons of components. It's uh, La Havre is the port and it represents a port in Germany. Everyone loves this game. I am really looking forward to playing it, hoping that it's up there with your Agricola's and your Caverna's and other Uwe greats. And that was La Havre. And that's it for our discussion on engine building. We're going to head over to the lobby now and see if anyone in our chat room has anything to add. Uh, we've had a bunch of uh, chat going in there, look, going on. and uh... All right, so so what were the favorite engine building games? I know Pennywise dropped their list right at the start of the chat. We're going to screw it back. So I want to know what's everyone's favorite. Now that you know our definition of engine builder, two <laughs> things. One, are we wrong? And two, what are your favorite engine builders? Uh, so the first, the f- top five for Pennywise are number one, Wingspan. Number two, Terraforming yep. Mars. Okay. Number three, Century Golem Edition. Okay, Kill so Splendor. Century... Yeah, it's Century <laughs> Golem Edition to me is an, an evolution. It's, it's Slender with a new theme. I do prefer it to Slender slightly, but it wasn't enough better for me to buy because I own Splendor. I found they felt very similar. What I was really curious about is they then released two other games in the series that you can play together so that one affects the other. That sounded really cool, but I was waiting for all the games to come out and then COVID hit. So Right. Uh, number four is Gizmos, just not yeah. at two players. Okay. Uh, and uh, number five is, uh, I'll have to think about, not sure yet. So okay. I don't know. He may have come up with something. Uh, may have come up post with something. That, but uh, uh, Trotorama mentions uh, engine building. Kanban, uh, Kanban, you are literally building cars. You are literally <laughs> building engines. I, to be honest, I don't think there's actually a lot of engine building in Kanban. I've, I've, you know what? It's been so long since I played that. If I remember. Kanban, you go to different spots on the board to do different things, but I don't think there's any tableau or building up. Uh, and here we it's go. It's a really solid game. And in the chat room, Pennywise says Everdell is the number five. Fair, totally fair. So, we got anyone else? Deanna, what are your favorite engine builders? Uh, so, engine building plus pushing your luck, Steampunk Rally. I could see that. Steampunk Rally looked really good, all about building your ship, and there are some push your luck aspects. I haven't personally played that one. Like, there are definitely more. Like yeah. the, and, then, and Pennywise, then what we listed. Pennywise is mentioning, you know, engine building should have minimal luck. Uh, and I yes. agree. Uh, if or there should be ways of of dealing with luck or or you know shaping shaping that sort of luck if there is luck involved. Um, but again, you need to know what's happening. Uh, so Roger mentions viticulture. That one I consider putting on the list. Right. Uh, viticulture definitely got your, your build up, especially when you're, you, you start adding stuff, right? You have your vineyard and you start adding various things to it that starts making better and better wine. And again, the wine you produce in that last round is going to be way more than the previous rounds. Interestingly though, I don't know if I would consider Vinhos as much in a way you're like, yeah, you're still doing the same things. You're, 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 yeah, it has some aspects, but again, I don't, I, I don't feel like I've run an engine. Right. Even when I'm going to the last fair of the year, I more feel like I built the combo up to get the most points than I built an engine to, to score points. Cause you don't know what they're going to want, right? Like you don't know what the magnates are going to want, which wines are going to be worth the most that last round. Right. So you're, you're, missing, you're missing some of that future information yeah. that would make it a more efficient engine. Though so you um, do d- definitely get the progression of, you yeah. make better wine as you there, go on. There, 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 are, again, there are engine building aspects, yeah. but like we mentioned, you 
without that information, it's hard to build the best right. system at the beginning to get the engine efficient. And if I remember in Viticulture, this is how long it's been. You can also, you draft people, right? You have your summer help and your winter help. And I think there's some permanence there with building up what, what help you have. And someone mentioned the Rhine Valley expansion for Viticulture really ramping up the engine building. Uh, I don't have that though. So uh, Dee's asking about Caverna. Yeah, Caverna is definitely an engine. All, all every Uwe Rosenberg. I, <laughs> I think every. Well, no, Bonanza is not. But all of his big farming games that I know of, uh, Caverna and, and Agricola definitely. Um, one of the best examples of that is that you are um, you get more workers, right? So that's another aspect: is you add more people to your family to let you get more actions, and with more actions, you get to get more stuff done. And it's all about building the resources to do it. But again, it's a big focus on card combos, right? It's a uh, putting the right. Uh, what are they called? This shows how long. No, Caverna doesn't have card combos. Caverna is building the buildings, building the right buildings that go along with whatever engine you're doing. So if you're trying to collect animals, and that's another way to, if you can, here's here's another way you can tell if a game's an engine builder, is if you can talk about the engine, right? So if you can talk about how, oh, I went with a farm strategy, or I went with a animal strategy, you're probably talking about an engine builder because there's you built the thing that keeps letting you get more farms and the farms produce more goods that you can sell to get more money or I kept mining it out leveling up my dwarves so I could get deeper into the mines those are two different engines that you could go for in Caverna or combine so I think that's another way you could see it space base uh, I haven't played it's I own a copy space base from what I understand is very similar to um, kingdoms uh, the Valeria game that we like Valeria Card Kingdoms. And I would definitely say that's an engine build. Again, very random base, but you definitely get the because I got this, I then get to convert this, and because I converted that, I get more of this, and then I'm going to use that to go kill the bigger, badder, bad guy that's going to give me more thing to let me kill the bigger, badder, bad guy, or collect kingdoms, because kingdoms are also worth points. And I, assuming space based, from what I understand, is similar to that, then yes. Uh, Puerto Rico would be a classic engine builder. Right where you're, you're going to try to build a combo with the buildings you have to produce the, the, the goods and sell them and get the money to ship the people. Mm. All right, I think that's the main ones we got. So so Deanna's list was uh, Race for the Galaxy, Viticulture, Caverna, Puerto Rico, Terraforming and Mars. Terraforming Mars. Yep. I think that's a pretty good list. I don't know if that was five. Uh, Rogers mentioned Steam Park. Steam Park, I have not tried. That one looks really cool. That's a, it goes very well with a game we're going to review when we get back from the coffee break. That's all about building a theme park for robots. And that's all I know about is I love the theme of that game. Is Not that you're just building a theme park, but you're building a theme park for robots to enjoy. Right. So that one looked cool. Um, one of the games he bought off me, Steamo Time, which, yes, I know it's not called that, but that shouldn't put the gear right between the two <laughs> words. Steamo Time is definitely has some engine building aspects. Again, I it's more of a worker placement game i did see it on other people's best engine builders what does the chat think is, is it a mechanic or is it a result of mechanics 